Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of The Daily. It's Wednesday, July 13th, here with Jason Skeeney. I'm Nick Farshaw, and Jay, a lot to get to today, but let's start with probably the biggest headline here on Wednesday. It's the U.S. Women's National Team in the semifinals of the Women's World Cup out in Germany. Jay, they're up against France. A lot of expectations about this U.S. team, but who knows what's going to happen after that dramatic game last time around. Yeah, all that drama goes for nothing if the U.S. don't beat France today and move on to the final. In the final, they'll face the winner of Sweden-Japan. Remember, Sweden is the team that beat the U.S. in the group stage, so that could be an interesting rematch in the final. And after this game is over, you can log on to MLSsoccer.com, find the recap and all the latest news on the U.S. Women's National Team. Well, let's move on to Wednesday night's action. The uh, World Football Challenge finally kicking off up at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, the New England Revolution, playing host to Manchester United. Jay, this is what we've wanted to see. Man U on the ground here in the United States. What do you expect? Should be an exciting game. They're expecting over 50,000 people in the crowd, so the atmosphere will certainly be there. The New England Revolution kind of looking at this game as an opportunity to maybe jumpstart mm -hmm. the second half of the season. They have some ground to make up in the playoff race. Well, you can find all the latest news from the World Football Challenge on MLSsoccer.com, including Real Madrid, Jose Mourinho uh, meeting with Bruce Arena and Landon Donovan, all the stars out there ahead of that big game on Saturday. You can log on to the website and find all the information there. Let's move back, uh, look back at Tuesday night, the U.S. Open Cup. Uh, Jay, one of the teams that has traditionally done so well in this tournament, the Chicago Fire, they get a big win on Tuesday night. They're on to the semifinals. Yeah, they beat the New York Red Bulls reserves for the most part. 4-0, the Red Bulls traveling in only the bare minimum players and coming in on game day. Chicago takes this tournament very seriously. They've won it four times. So you expect in that matchup that Chicago's going to win, and they did emphatically 4-0. And in the semifinals, they're going to face one of the Cinderella's of this tournament, the Richmond Kickers. They get a 2-0 win over Sporting Kansas City. Yeah, Richmond keeping the hope alive for the Minnows in this tournament. They uh, put up a good performance, did not make Peter Vermees very happy. Kansas City was taking this tournament seriously. They wanted to win this game. They wanted to move on. And Peter Vermees said to his team, this is not going to be a fun week for sporting. Another team that was taking this tournament very seriously is uh, Real Salt Lake. Head coach Jason Christ saying it was a uh, priority for Real Salt Lake. But they go down to FC Dallas 2-0. Yeah, Real Salt Lake wanted to get back into Champions League, and they saw this as the shortest route there to get back in. They cannot win in Dallas, though. Now 0-10-1 in all games playing in Dallas. I don't know what to tell them. Mm -hmm. they got to try something new next time they go down there. But FC Dallas now awaiting the winner of tonight's match. And that match is the LA Galaxy at the Seattle Sounders out at Starfire and Tukwila. Jay, these two teams have some history, not just on the field in MLS, but also in the U.S. Open Cup. Yeah, last year, Seattle Sounders knocked out LA in the Open Cup. Nate Jake was scoring two goals. It'll be interesting to see in this game what LA does because they have the game we mentioned against Real Madrid over the weekend but as far as Ziggy Schmidt's concerned he said they could pretty much play their starters with it without an MLS game we're going to find out which game the LA Galaxy prioritized and again uh, you can find the information for a live stream to watch that game on MLSsoccer.com a couple last things before we go Eric Hasley the Vancouver striker we all remember that wonderful goal against the Seattle Sounders it is up for an SB award for play of the year he's down to the final eight so you can log on and vote make sure he gets into that final Final four and maybe wins the whole thing. Yeah, the ESPYs are tonight at 9 p.m. and you can vote during the show. That's how the final uh, vote is going to go. So support Eric Hasley and what a phenomenal goal that was. There was also a phenomenal goal last night as the San Jose Earthquakes had a friendly against West Brom and it was their backup goalkeeper David Bingham scoring a goal. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable for David Bingham, the rookie goalkeeper, to get a, a goal like that against West Brom from the Premier League. And San Jose wins the game 2-1. Well, it doesn't happen that often, Jay, but when it does, uh, I think a lot of fans get a very big kick out of seeing a goalkeeper uh, get one, especially from long distance. Uh, one last thing before we go. There's a limited amount of tickets that have just gone on sale for the MLS All-Star Game July 27th. I get Manchester United out at Red Bull Arena. You can uh, log on to MLSsoccer.com for more information about that. And that does it for us. We'll see you around next time with The Daily.